They've been on a journey spanning 130 years and two continents. But these bones of Bardi Jawi ancestors have come full circle, back to the Kimberley coast from where they were stolen. And they were placed in their burial site by their families, only to be removed and taken away. And uh, now we have these uh, remains back after all these years. Local families gathered at a beach several hundred kilometres north of Broome to see the remains restored to a secret location. Two of the boxes contain skulls taken illegally by a pearling captain in the late 1800s. In the other, a skeleton stolen by Palatine monk Ernest Verm 40 years later. After speeches, the bones were taken up the coast to be laid to rest in a cave. That'll be happy, they're back in the home. Yeah. Rest. An emotional moment for all involved. I think uh, people felt a sense of closure and, and a, a sense of uh, satisfaction that the, uh, the wrong that has been done where the remains have been taken away in the first place has been corrected. The return of the bones was made possible by the federal government's International Repatriation Program, which over two decades has negotiated the return of around 2,000 sets of human remains. It's a sensitive diplomatic area, and not all countries are proving cooperative. As co-chair of the Indigenous Repatriation Committee, Zoe Rimmer knows how much work still lies ahead to bring Aboriginal Australians home. It's really hard to estimate um, how many more um, ancestors are still in institutions overseas. Um, we believe that they'd be in the thousands. Is there any more overseas or wherever in Canberra or something? We should have them back now um, because this is where they should be. For now, a small victory for the Badi Jawi people. Erin Park, ABC News on the Dampier Peninsula.